I'd like to uh, uh, first of all uh, pay tribute to the initiative of Her Excellency, uh, the Minister for Happiness uh, of Dubai, and uh, through her to His Highness. Uh, we feel extremely privileged to uh, belong to this uh, kind of uh, meeting. Mm, and I notice, looking back, that these sort of things have become a little more frequent. And I have also no noticed that due to the initiative of scholars, government, uh, uh, s uh, then uh, non-governmental organizations, that the ecosystem, so to speak, uh, where these kind of things are acceptable have grown. We are engaged uh, at the end, as you all know, through your kind effort to first of all change the values by which we live our life and secondly to change policies which affect through legislation and public investment uh, our general social, political, economic environment. And lastly, to reinforce those changes by establishing little more durable institutions that go beyond all of us as individuals. So uh, we are very heartened uh, that uh, this uh, great initiative has been launched by Dubai and uh, Her Excellency has uh, organized this. I think it is a watershed event and watershed event means when you cross a watershed usually you come to a different ecosystem and an ecosystem is different uh, where those who participate in it as contributors and being contributed by, they live with different rules. So uh, the ecosystem by which government and individuals interact under different goals and values, I think beginning to take a little newer shape towards uh, since the end of last century and now little more vigorously. I, for myself, um, uh, this morning, Andrew explained, Andrew also explained some of the reason why uh, GDP should take a little uh, backward step. Uh, yes, those reasons are there, but I also think that in our history around the world, the period that has emerged where we can really discuss about this kind of fundamental issues have been short-lived. It's, it's not so long ago. Colonialism, ruthless poverty, ruthless exploitation, wars, more or less did not allow us to discuss this thing and it is for the first time these are happening. Of course, uh, in promoting happiness and related policies, I myself feel that we should never forget the larger uh, uh, serious issues of the world and how the aggregate effect of these happiness policies may play on, on or against them or for them. And these are, as the UN people mentioned, uh, climate change, biodiversity breakdown, overpopulation, and therefore the very big uh, footprint um, competition for resources, uh, overpopulation, uh, concentration of power in uh, few countries and uh, uh, also in mail, for example. All those things are a uh, very big uh, backdrop and we always have to think what is the aggregate effect of this kind of uh, policy set within uh, happiness pursuit would have on those, those things. If by itself those things cannot uh, be a help in solving this major problem. It would also come to an end by itself, in my opinion. So uh, this is very important. Um, my, uh, I'm very sorry that I imagined something else and I chose a set of slides which is really uh, very simple. Uh, I didn't think enough about the sophisticated audience here. 
So I can't do much about it. And in addition, um, you know, my body's psychophysical adaptation is towards Bhutan, you know, and I was used to not traveling so much. And when I came into this uh, extremely um, high standard hotel, I could not sleep last night. <laughs> so so, so that, that also, you know, um, kind of uh, playing against my cognition. Uh, cannot remember things now very fast. <coughs> uh, with that, um, and this, this background of uh, uh, deep problems, uh, our world, uh, the trajectory not so happy in that sense, uh, is also depicted in this uh, simple iconography that I painted as part of my uh, life. Uh, so here you see a man uh, had lived to vital old age. Uh, but the background is also other animals which have lived very long. An elephant which grown big in size, monkey, a bird whose tails are very long, a, a stag whose antlers are extremely long, a river whose course, of, uh, course is also very long and behind there is a cave uh, deep cave uh, from which things emerge and probably also life first began to emerge. So this is a sort of uh, harmony which uh, um, our friend from Ecuador mentioned this morning. Uh, in some sense, we must not always forget uh, the uh, relationship of happiness with many other things, such as that community is uh, contained in the environment and the uh, individual is further contained in the environment and so the individual is contained in the larger sort of sound and harmonious environment. And that uh, 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 is not just uh, theoretical, in the indicators later on you see the, 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 the environment playing uh, um, uh, significant role. So uh, uh, now I hesitate to present all these things. I said uh, because I made a very simple thing. Uh, it's a, a, a Bhutan, uh, a country which uh, philosophically uh, based on the notion of liberating creatures or liberating all sentient beings. And from the point of view of happiness, uh, this has a slight implication on how we deal with uh, uh, creatures, uh, including those which we consume as chicken or crab or whatever, uh, uh, let alone uh, the preservation of habit uh, habitat. So uh, uh, it has some practical influence on uh, collective behavior and ethics. Um, and uh, his Excellency the Prime Minister mentioned about the uh, legislation part uh, 400 years ago, uh, but once again, philosophically speaking, uh, Bhutan is a country which had Vajrayana Buddhism, uh, and in Vajrayana Buddhism, the final uh, aim or objective is uh, mindful or non-dual mindfulness. Uh, I shall show one slide about that later on. Uh, but I just wanted to show that, uh, that extreme point, uh, whereas the GNH is not related very much to, to that. It is, it is about ordinary householder's happiness. It's not about that sort of uh, yogi or ascetic pursuit. But uh, we need to know the philosophical and moral uh, uh, final point. And it's also a uh, as, um, kingdom now, but um, regulated by the constitution. Uh, these are our king and queen. I must uh, just spend five seconds only on this. The, the, the research is by Antonova uh, Ilona, and the non-dual mi mindfulness uh, depends very much on really switching off the ordinary 
default network in our brain. And here is this uh, MRI by her. The last one and the first one is important. The first one is a chap who is struggling with uh, non-dual mindfulness. So uh, you can see all parts of your brains are activated in that struggle. But the last part is where everything has been switched off. Your thalamus, which is the gateway of information, has been switched off. Your insula, which is the uh, part which makes sense of your body suspended in space, that is also switched off. And the main point I want to mention is that this sort of mental state and cultivation is finally related to what you call emptiness, and emptiness is finally related to what you call blissfulness. The blissfulness of emptiness is sort of uh, the uh, Bhutanese uh, and uh, Tibetan uh, uh. but I'm uh, the thing is not on that thing is on ordinary household girls life and here we have all of us have 24 hours 1440 minutes equal but spent differently because of our different lifestyle, different values, different urges, and so on and so forth. In the well-being and happiness literature, uh, there is, a, is immense dominance on relationship between creativity, workplace, productivity, etc. But not much uh, uh, measurement on the other two uh, parts of our 24 hours. My main point here is that uh, we need to scope uh, this, uh, all three areas in order to understand it much better. Uh, as you know, uh, this is a fixed, fleeting finitude within which we live 24 hours. And uh, as someone mentioned this, uh, yeah, Mihal mentioned this, that the sense of uh, timelessness which you feel is more or less sensed retrospectively as a happy moment. Uh, nobody senses time in a mechanically correct way. One minute is never one minute. It's either fast, slow, pleasant, or so and so forth. So, uh, <coughs> but uh, generally, yes, uh, as you uh, go deeper and deeper, I think uh, some sense of uh, suspended in the moment is uh, uh, closer to approximate it what is a deep happiness. Uh, I, I, a few days ago, I came across an article by Andrew Sp Spire, and uh, he mentioned that uh, proliferation of um, pun, pun industry is there, and a lot of fun consultants are there, how to uh, make more fun out of your life. Uh, I just want to say we are not in that business. Uh, much more serious things are. So, uh, in my, um, I've just chosen very simple uh, graphs culled from our vast data. And here you can see that the, uh, the uh, across all ages, the rural work time is a bit longer than urban work time in Bhutan. Um, so this probably, probably uh, explains a little bit why the uh, well-being level in rural area is depressed compared to urban areas. And it also explains uh, what someone explain uh, as a midlife crisis. This is slightly correlated. Not, not everything is based on this. Slightly because in the midlife, uh, somehow the work hours peaks, as you know. But even this uh, work hour peaking, if you break the information down by occupation, it is not true. The, the farmer's uh, uh, time curve is much more shallower than the other people. So here's, you see, uh, um, the p female in Bhutan uh, enjoying uh, more sleep. Uh, sleep has a profound effect on the next day's quality. 
and uh, somehow, although the female people work longer, they shrink the leisure hours and also sleep uh, much longer. Um, uh, we haven't come yet to the point where we can measure the quality of sleep and quality of all other activities. This, this is very important, I think, next stage to always measure the quality and depth of experience instead of just the uh, flat or uh, one dimension, just time. Uh, uh, the, 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 the inability of uh, people to sleep well because of noise, because of worry, because of bad dreams, uh, which are triggered by some other events during the day, et cetera, et cetera, uh, would be very interesting. Uh, but to be able to disconnect from everything during your sleep to ensure a good sleep would be useful. Uh, people mentioned also the relationship uh, aspect. I think, uh, uh, I think the, the nothing is more important than long, trustworthy, uh, dependable relationship. In fact, uh, um, we can measure this sort of uh, time spent on socialization uh, by age group, by uh, um, occupation, by resident, etc. But um, how, why, and the quality of uh, this relationship, I think is extremely important to happiness because only when relationship goes well or something arises, unexpected, amazing uh, in your relationship, uh, happiness is uh, momentarily coming up as a byproduct. So it is an emergent property. Mm. Uh, but here you see the pattern is very different. The civil service uh, servants socializing early part of the day in the name of serving the country and so on and so forth, uh, uh, not doing work. Um, um, a lot was uh, mentioned on subjective well-being. I think there's a lot more work to do for all of us together to refine this instrument. Uh, it is a really um, good way of beginning, but as uh, someone mentioned, Andrew also mentioned this morning, the reporting function, what is going on when such a composite question like, uh, judging your whole life is going on in people's mind requires a lot more work. We have no explanatory power uh, why this curve goes up and down. Uh, uh, so here you are. Uh, uh, this is uh, not the score which is used by World Value Survey. I sent a letter. How do you derive it by yourself? They, they said 1,000 telephone calls or so. I asked people, did you receive telephone call from someone? I didn't get a good answer, credible answer. But anyway, this is the Bhutanese case for 2015. Uh, not too bad given the per capita income. Uh, it is quite uh, close to the top uh, group. Here you see by age group, there is a slight dip uh, in the midlife. Um, I like to uh, distinguish that uh, what we do is not a subjective well-being scores. What we uh, calculate is a slightly different one, uh, gross national happiness index, and it measures very different things, and its results are quite different from subjective well-being. But I, we still like to do uh, both in order to compare, see what is the, what information, uh, which curve is picking up. Uh, for example, you see the curve growing down, but trying to, pick up again towards the end of life. In GNH index cup, this doesn't happen. So here is a little more breakdown of the subjective well-being uh, questions. Um, overall is for your life as a whole, as you know. Happiness felt yesterday is higher than your overall objective. I personally wonder whether a person is able to uh, somehow judge past and present 
so clearly. Uh, in my own case, I can't remember where I was 10 days ago or something. So, so sometimes I wonder, but uh, it is an accepted discipline, so we go. Desire is much higher. Everybody is sort of allowed free reign to see how much they would like to have in life. Um, and expected level of happiness in next five years much lower than that desired level. What can we make out of this for policy? Very difficult for me, actually. This is why we don't use it very much. So this is uh, emotion. Uh, one is not the, uh, they are not on the same continuum. They ask completely different questions. So uh, uh, you can see that uh, negative emotions are younger for, uh, higher for students, but very uh, uh, low negative emotions as expected in nuns, monks, who are given a lot of training. I think this is a very important point this morning, that some sort of inner resource training is needed uh, before you uh, land yourself in the drama of life by about 18, 16, uh, and the monks, these things, they are, uh, they, they have that, I think. Uh, the questionnaire, questionnaire goes something like this, as you can see, for the emotions, uh, negative emotions, positive emotions, but they are not on the same continuum, so uh, uh, the s scores are very distinct. So uh, again, this morning there was a, a discussion about a dangerous neg negative emotion, which is anger, uh, which uh, uh, burns yourself as well as those around you. Uh, in according to our statistics, 10% of adult Buddhists suffer anger uh, once a week, which means uh, an individual 10% is suffering 52 times in in a year. Uh, this is quite a lot, quite a lot, but uh, only 10%. But I think when you have the experience of that emotion, other emotions are completely drowned. Uh, so again, this kind of data can be broken down uh, up to the district level in Bhutan. So that is very useful for uh, uh, policy intervention. It's also a festival uh, that I was privileged to produce this dance. Uh, if we regress uh, the variables, all the variables on subjective well-being, this is the kind of answer we get uh, for Bhutan. Um, Nevertheless, the model is not so good, as you know, the data is mainly categorical, uh, so that's not so good for regression uh, causal analysis. It explains only about 16% variation uh, between subjective well-being and the, uh, uh, other independent variables. Uh, this is another uh, painting of mine, but uh, main thing is that in the Bhutanese context, if we take subjective well-being uh, as the dependent variable, what are uh, uh, important significant factor is person is not divorced, not wid widowed. Between married and not married, it is not at all a crucial factor in Bhutan. But if you are married, as the Prime Minister said, if you are divorced or separated, then it, is, uh, it has a huge uh, pulling down effect on happiness. High spirituality as measured by meditation. Education level, partly because that is a uh, proxy for income, but not proxy for income, things like emotional positivity, low negative emotions, also low stress level, that is measured by GHQ, uh, 12 set of questions. Good family relationship, that's measured by set of 12 questions. Adequate sleep hours. Limited working hours, 
etc. are most important. Uh, but I uh, painted this uh, to show another aspect that is that humans being experience of color is, is um, uh, on one plane just like music very important. Uh, we forget uh, these kind of subtle influences. If you ask uh, people all over Bhutan as represented by 8,000 80, 80, 8, 8, respondent, they give another set of questions, uh, answers. We ask them, considering what you have, what you are already, what would make you more happy, uh, happier? Uh, then the top three, as you know, one is always money. But uh, as um, uh, a speaker mentioned this morning, uh, we have to discount quite a lot of that due to various effect we have to discount. Good health, which is a function of health system, but also quite a great deal about your own habits. And that is where training comes into play. Uh, uh, very important. And uh, lastly, and family relationship. I think these two areas probably have no negative uh, or diminishing uh, returns. Uh, the more you have but good family uh, cannot be sustained, in our opinion, without a surrounding good neighborhood. This is a sort of, um, you know, cascading uh, uh, dependence uh, from individual to the family, family to the good neighborhood. So it's really about good neighborhood. And the rest, uh, quite revealing things like environment, since it is already very good, people won't cons consider that. So it also has some limitation in policy application. Um, since it is on measurement, I made, picked up some simple points. Um, national survey is once every four years. Uh, election is once every fifth year. Um, we produce the re relationship for the next government, whoever it might be. And, uh, as uh, His Excellency mentioned, is a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, interview, and uh, the timing is a little longer than His Excellency mentioned. It's not one and a half, but actually it's two and two and a half hours. It's a very long one, very long one, uh, and uh, uh, very searching questions are asked about personal, uh, a lot of life matters, and sometimes, uh, people who are not used to reflecting on these situations, uh, uh, it causes a lot of uh, uh, traumatic moment. Uh, for example, uh, one old lady actually uh, uh, broke down after the survey. Uh, so not a very happy thing. Um, Oversampled actually. Actually we need only 1.7% of population according to, but we ask about 9,000. And here you can see through random sampling how you f we finally go to the uh, um, family level. And within the family, uh, we ask people to draw lots. So, I, from the beginning, it's not to the end, this is end. Can you go to the beginning? beginning of the slide. I thought uh, to give you uh, a sense of uh, what, what an adventure this, is, this survey is. Surveyor's food is being carried.
So, uh, the, um, uh, in OECD, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, making composite uh, thing is a uh, rather controversial and challenging thing. Uh, we did that, uh, but uh, um, as you rightly say, uh, what it exactly means is uh, not so clear to many people, especially when so many things are mashed up together. Uh, in our indicator, something like 129 variables are aggregated. So, but for policy purpose, the de decomposability of the index is very useful. We can decompose it to the district level and, uh, you know, so uh, that is to provide a, a big picture, um, but uh, this kind of uh, slides uh, we can make for 700 variables derived from our survey. That is very useful because we can then begin to think about those micro, micro, micro relevant issues uh, around which we can weave policies. Of course, uh, it must have all sort of uh, uh, checks uh, in statistical term. I have given it there. Um, um, main thing is uh, uh, we are still uh, short of uh, neurobiological instruments uh, to directly uh, check. Uh, we, I think none of us are uh, able to pinpoint five or six things which are good constructs that would reflect 100% your happiness. Uh, that is still something to be done, I think, uh, um, short of neurobiological uh, things. Um, uh, as you know, the s s um, subjective well-being very correlates so badly with income. Uh, um, but we continue to rely on that to some extent. Uh, the um, breakdown of subjective well-being by domains also, we continue to uh, uh, use it, but it seems to, correlation seems to be not so powerful just now. So we are at a loss, but uh, our um, attempt is to just now amass as much information as possible and see which one clicks, uh, which one are the best ones uh, to explain what we call this mysterious uh, consciousness called happiness. So that is why this, uh, ex uh, there is something on everything, subjective, objective, inner, outer, individual, communal, uh, and uh, young ones, old ones, tangible, intangible ones. But the research on individual uh, issues like that has already been established that it is good for happiness and so on and so forth. But most importantly, I think we have to aim for uh, policy relevance, uh, policy relevance uh, in order to shift government public expenditure and policies. Um, some of the prominent uh, goals that have been inserted into the five-year plan of Bhutan directly coming from the Gross National Happiness Survey, we continue. So, uh, uh, Prime Minister already mentioned about these nine areas, a um, uh, bit, bit like OECD in the labels, but the content is slightly very different. Um, the analogy is, suppose you are living holistically, vitally, by drinking from nine cups at the same time. Uh, one thing is not only drinking or not drinking, uh, not uh, whether it contains f f nothing or everything, but how much, how much, how much is important. So that how much is related to what is sufficiency level in each indicator. So this uh, is a so-called 33 indicators of GNHE. Now indicators are weighted. Some are carrying heavy weight, some are keeping uh, low weight, and this is decided through uh, discussion, has a reference to national base, um, benchmarks, international benchmark, etc. 
So, so this is uh, decomposable by areas of concern, by demography, by district, by occupation, uh, so and so forth, by emotion, by time, uh, all sort of analytical cat categories one can um, um, tabulate this data set can generate. So overall, uh, and this is the slight change, and from uh, we, we have, uh, uh, since happiness is not yes or no, everybody has some happiness. Uh, it's only whether you're brimming uh, more durably or is it a short flip in your consciousness from now and then you're going in out. Uh, we, uh, there's some sort of gradient, some sort of uh, unhappy, little bit happy, more happy, and very uh, convincingly durably happy type, you know, in a blissful manner, you know. And what we found out, now, of course, I'm reporting only two surveys. Actually, there are five surveys. I'm only reporting two surveys. That it is very difficult to push population into the deeply happy category. Something seems to be slipping back. Uh, so, uh, when you, uh, so, uh, very challenging, uh, we, we, the material action at the material level can easily push people from unhappy to narrowly happy. But from in a robust manner experiencing happiness that is extensively happy to go into a top experience of deep durable happiness seems to be very difficult and some other instrument seems to be necessary. So this is for the in composite index, but we have uh, maps like this for 33 indicators and 129 variables. So the action that uh, uh, there's proposed to the government and government has accepted is that the last three or four districts which are performing very badly on one of the 129 indicators will be the sort of, uh, uh, they will focus on that. So this by domain. So the, you can see that uh, absolute and relative change uh, in the last five years. Oh, time up, okay, thank you very much. As I mentioned, uh, improvement in GNH in all categories Income and GNH index is uh, correlated 19% or so. But income and subjective well-being, as somebody mentioned, for the world as a whole, 2%, same, 1.19. So if we wish to push the happiness of the people at the, uh, at the top end of the age group, uh, this uh, becomes very vital. We have to pay more attention on this auto uh, degenerative and uh, disabilities. Uh, much was said on uh, dependability and friendship. Uh, yes, uh, it is very much so. Uh, life without happiness is really a life destitute of relationship. That is uh, true. Safety, this is a particular definition, is after dark walking in the, uh, walking around after dark. And um, there are many surprises, there are, uh, that it almost counterintuitive all the time results. This is a safety level in Thimpu, the capital city which has the maximum number of police, uh, lights and other um, protective measures, but still the fear that is deep inside your mind uh, reports here. So it is not that kind of uh, overt uh, things that can now tackle this. It is something else. Just last two minutes. We have
So one of the cause of uh, fear uh, of walking uh, after dark is ghost, sense of ghost presence. And the other is this one. Uh, but uh, this kind of record also proved that uh, tigers roam at uh, 5,000, 4,000 feet above sea level, meters above sea level. So uh, in our GNH, uh, since uh, damage of crops by wild animals is a major issue, we have to take this into account. So it is also built into uh, um, the index. Uh, So the environment as a whole is uh, rather intact, uh, but the perception of uh, pollution in West has already uh, become problematic for urban areas in Bhutan. So I will skip the aggregation method and uh, I'll come to the last point. Uh, this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, analogies are there, the how to do. And the last point is that uh, its main function is not so much to uh, understand at this point how somebody is uh, happy, but uh, why somebody is not so happy at this moment? And uh, wh where are these people? Uh, who are these people? And what can we do, uh, as people this morning said, as individuals provided some cognitive improvement is there, psychological improvement is there, we can do something as individuals. Another thing is organizations who create the kind of kind of water for the fish uh, has to do something else. Uh, so organizations, what can they do? And lastly, what can government do? These three are the main sort of uh, questions for GNH. Uh, I will end here. Thank you very much. <laughs>